The first weekend in Speyer is now behind us, but the next one is approaching quickly. Contrary to the banner, we could not yet demonstrate that we belong to the world's elite. We scored four board points over the first two matches. To reach our very ambitious goals, that is, to score at least 31.5 board points over the 15 matches, not to be last in the eternal table of the Schach Bundesliga, it would be great to score more than four board points on the next weekend. For this, we will need pearls. Beautiful games. Tom Piquet already produced such a pearl for himself on the first weekend by beating the 2700 Grandmaster David Howell. Speaking of pearls, the next weekend takes place in Hamburg, which is known for the song Hamburg meine Perle, or in English, Hamburg my pearl. So let's take a look at our opponents. On Saturday, we are going to play against the team of Tom Kiel, and I would like to take a look at their players. So on board one, they have um, Ivan Ciparinov. Ciparinov is quite well known in the chess community as the probably former second now uh, of Veselin Topalov. Um, and he's credited with a lot of opening novelties that Topalov unleashed on his opponents. So it would be very interesting to play against this very creative player. Yeah, this is one example of um, a novelty developed by Ivan Ciparinov and unleashed by uh, Veselin Topalov. In this position, it's wide to move, and Ciparinov came up with a fantastic idea. The idea is to play knight takes f7, sacrificing an entire piece, and at first sight, it's not so clear um, what the compensation of white should be like. Black um, took the piece, so in the game, black was uh, Vladimir Kramnik. And uh, yeah, the game was Topalov against Kramnik from Baikansee 2008. And um, Topalov played the move e5, attacking the knight on f6. Of course, the knight has to jump, and white plays knight e4. The idea is now to give a check on d6 in order to collect the bishop on b7. So black has to um, parry that threat by playing king e7, and after knight d6, to protect the bishop by playing. Um, queen to b6. And still you might wonder what the actual compensation of white is. And the two next moves of white are going to show that. So white is going to play bishop g4. And after a normal move by black, rook f8, white plays queen c2. And now the idea of white is just to put pressure on e6 and uh, g7, because the next move of white is going to be queen to g6, uh, and it's very hard for black to defend against this pressure. In the game, Kremlin failed to do so, and Topalov won uh, a pearl. Another very beautiful game. Yeah, so this novelty shows you the amazing creativity of Ceparinov in the openings, because um, yeah, it's very hard to come up with such a novelty, even with a computer, because the computer at first glance is not going to like the move knight takes f7. So let's go back to the uh, team of Kiel. On boards two and three, they have Anton Demchenko, who I think played before for the team of Düsseldorf and now switched to Kiel, probably to still play in the first league and to play on a very high board as well, facing very strong opposition. Sorry, Anton, if you have to play against me, you have one round off from the strong opposition, but for the rest, you will face very fierce rivals. On board three, we have uh, Igor Henkin. Uh, about Henkin, I know much more than about Demchenko, because uh, Henkin is a former member of the German national team, and I saw him play in, on many occasions. Yeah, Henkin is more of a solid player. I think Demchenko is also a little bit more of a solid player compared to Ceparinov. And in either case, I'm expecting a long grind if I play against Demchenko or Henkin. So my thoughts right now is that the probability is pretty high that I will play against Demchenko because he played on board one already in the first two rounds. And in addition, Ceparinov might not be there because there's the Chinese league taking place at the same time. There's also an outside chance, I think, that I play against Henkin, and I think I will not take a look at any of the others because I think it's very unlikely that I play against somebody else. For the team, yeah, this match um, is going to be a tough one, as all of the matches. Uh, and the average of their team is probably around 25.50. So 
I expect that we will have uh, a hard time and I don't think we have a realistic chance of getting a team point. Our goal should be to score as many board points as somehow possible. The second match of the weekend will take place against Hamburg, who is also hosting this weekend. Yeah, Hamburg is pretty well known as chess club, a very old and traditional chess club, also one of the biggest chess clubs in Germany, and they do also a lot for the uh, youth. So uh, I'm very happy in that sense to come back to Hamburg, where I already also played a couple of times. Let's take a look at their players. On board one, we have Jan Krzysztof Duda, uh, the Polish grandmaster, young player, um, is an absolute elite player by now. He was the second of the World Blitz Championship last year behind certain Magnus Carlsen. And uh, yeah, he's just a fantastic player. I played against him in the World uh, Rapid a couple of years ago and I lost without any chance. So I would actually um, want to try to see if I can do better a second time around. On board two, we have Niels Grandelius. Grandelius is also known as a pretty creative player um, with a lot of fresh ideas and uh, a very interesting playing style. So I, this would be also an opponent which I would really like to play against. Um, not that I necessarily think that I have uh, what it takes to draw or beat him, but it would be very just very fun to play against him. And on board three, we have Rasmus Swane. And yeah, so the title of the video is about pearls and princes. So I will include a short story about the princes. And uh, yeah, so there is a group of people, young German grandmasters, including Donchenko, including um, Blühbaum and uh, Swane, who are the so-called princes. And the German chess federation invested some money and they also grew together somehow. And they are now all very strong 2600 grandmasters. So in case uh, Duda and Grandelius are not there, I would expect to play against Zwane again. Um, I played him in a long game when he was still very young and we drew. So I think that he would try to beat me the second time around and um, yeah, would also be probably quite interesting game against him. About the team, yeah, maybe Hamburg might be a tiny bit weaker than, than Kiel if they don't play with all of their top players, which I don't expect them to do against us. Um, but still, I don't think we have a realistic chance to get um, a team point. But maybe we can try to score something like two and a half board points in this match, which would be already quite an achievement for us. Okay, so this was my little preview on the next Bundesliga weekend. If you want, feel free to tune in on, um, sa on Saturday at 2 o'clock and Sunday at 10 o'clock for the uh, live transmission of the games on the Schach Bundesliga website. Yeah, thanks a lot for watching and I'm really looking forward to playing the second weekend again against two super strong grandmasters. See you for the next video.